Tinder. Do I really need to say any more? In July of 2015, 18-year-old Anna was browsing Tinder in hopes of meeting a nice guy when she came across 19-year-old Jake Powers' profile. The two exchanged pleasantries and numbers and soon they arranged to meet up at a house in Rancho Cucamonga, California around midnight. Anna thought Jake seemed like a decent guy, but the darkness of night can bring out the monster in people. Anna arrived at the residence where Jake suddenly turned violent. Forcing her into a headlock, he threw her to the ground and sexually assaulted her before fleeing the scene. Anna went to the police immediately, but tracing Jake on Tinder was impossible. His profile was gone. Not long after, a man attempted to rape a 16-year-old girl in her own neighborhood after she got off her school bus. She fought back and screamed, scaring the man off, but luckily, a neighbor's surveillance camera captured a picture of the attacker fleeing. Police shared the image on social media, hoping someone would recognize the man. However, they weren't expecting the attacker himself to walk into the police station to discuss his suspected involvement in the assaults. Police identified the teen as Jake Powers and found he was connected to both the attempted rape and to Anna's assault. Jake was charged with sexual assault, but police believe he has even more victims, possibly some he connected with on Tinder, and they urge any other possible victims to come forward so that full justice will be served. On June 5th, 2016, in Denver, Colorado, a woman swiped through potential dates on Tinder when she matched with 31-year-old Brett Sisman. The woman was wary of online interactions, so she exercised caution and spent several days chatting and speaking over the phone with Brett before planning the first date. She had no hesitation about meeting up for dinner and drinks after her first impression, but upon meeting him in person, her instincts told her she'd made an awful mistake. Almost immediately after finishing her first drink, the woman felt the room begin to spin, but this wasn't a light-hearted tipsiness. As she became more disoriented, she suspected Brett of spiking her drink. She told her date she felt sick, hoping to get away from him, but he took her back to his home so she could rest it off. The woman collapsed on the couch, the nausea and dizziness worsening with every passing minute. But Brett had little regard for his date's sickness. He threw the woman over his shoulder and carried her to his bedroom, where he demanded oral sex, and when the woman refused, he replied with, I'm not asking you, I'm telling you. Brett then sexually forced himself on her, pinning her down and biting her, despite pleas from the disoriented woman to stop. After the assault, the woman managed to escape her attacker, and the first thing she did was report the violent encounter to police. Brett was later arrested, but released after posting his $50,000 bail. However, he hasn't escaped justice yet, and if convicted, he may find that being a registered sex offender makes it much more difficult to find a date. When a 20-year-old student from the University of Kansas matched with 30-year-old Shane Allen on Tinder, nothing about him seemed out of the ordinary. He was friendly in conversation, and the two even had a decent first date. But when he picked her up from her sorority house on April 12, 2016, for their second date, things went far from according to plan. Shane drove the student to his trailer home in Lawrence, where the girl, Shane, and two of his friends smoked weed and enjoyed friendly conversation. As the night dragged on, Shane's friends left, and he and his date laid down to go to sleep. All of a sudden, Shane accused the woman of flirting with his friends, saying she reminded him of his ex-girlfriend. She hardly had time to deny the accusation before Shane punched her across the face and beat her into the floor. Injured and frightened for her life, the girl begged Shane to take her home, but he refused, saying she couldn't leave until the bruises healed. The next six days were hell. Shane forced her to respond to Facebook messages from concerned friends, telling them she was fine when she was far from it, enduring physical assault daily, everything from beatings to being choked. Afraid that disobeying would result in her death, she complied 
On April 18th, Shane finally took her home after she reassured him she wouldn't go to police, but she wouldn't have to. Upon walking into the sorority house, one of her sisters saw the extent of her injuries and immediately took her friend to the hospital. The girl was treated for two black eyes and had horrific bruising all over her body in addition to strangulation marks around her neck. Understanding the full extent of what happened took several days as the victim could only be interviewed for so long before her injuries forced her to rest. Shane Allen was arrested on April 22nd and faces five felony charges. If convicted on all counts, he could see up to 32 years behind bars. The world of online dating is fast and cutthroat, so when a woman on Tinder was matched with 27-year-old Darren Auger in June of 2015, the two quickly exchanged phone numbers and began communicating through text messages. Almost a week later, they met up for sushi in Denver's Cherry Creek neighborhood, where the pair seemed to hit it off at first. After dinner, they went for a casual stroll in Washington Park, chatting about work and their personal lives. They then returned to the woman's home. The woman told Darren she refused to have sex without a condom, but he wasn't about to let that thwart his advances. He continued to push things further, the woman telling him to stop, but the struggle eventually turned into full-on sexual assault. After, she screamed at Darren to get out of her house, saying, when someone says no, it means no. To which he responded, I've had a lot of girls say no, but they like it afterward. The woman reported the event and Darren was arrested on charges of sexual assault. However, he pled guilty in December of 2015 to a lesser charge, a misdemeanor that landed him in jail for only 30 days. As punishment, he has to register as a sex offender for the next decade and had to pay $1,260 in restitution a small sum in comparison to the trauma the woman endured, leaving her with little consolation. Being a shy introvert can make it harder to land a lot of dates, but 30-year-old Gable Tosti had long outgrown his adolescent awkwardness by the time Tinder came around. He transformed himself into a self-described playboy and bragged about sleeping with over 100 women he'd met on the app, claiming the sexual conquest did wonders to boost his confidence and ego. To Gable, 26-year-old tourist Worriana Wright was just another notch in his bedpost, and he made it clear to her he was only looking for a hookup. She played along, and the pair met up on August 7, 2014 for drinks and a night of fun. CCTV cameras captured the pair's first meeting before they set off for a local bar. The couple later bought a six-pack and took the festivities back to Gable's apartment for a bit more privacy. Once they were inside Gable's room, he began recording their conversation, an odd habit he'd picked up after too many nights of being too intoxicated to remember anything. But he wouldn't need a recording to make this a night he would never forget. While in Gable's apartment, the two took selfies, which at first showed the couple having fun, but later, Worriana's mood clearly changed. An argument broke out between them, and Worriana began throwing decorative rocks at Gable while he accused her of being a crazy bitch. He screamed at her, saying she was lucky he didn't have her thrown off his balcony. Worriana went quiet, taking deep breaths to calm down. She apologized, but her voice suddenly became panicked as she screamed no repeatedly, begging Gable to just let her go home. But Gable locked her out of his apartment balcony instead. Upset and intoxicated three times over the legal limit, Oriana felt her only escape from Gable was to climb to the balcony below. Gable's downstairs neighbor glimpsed her feet dangling from the balcony before she fell, screaming as she plunged 14 stories to her death. The neighbor called police while Gable changed his clothes and exited his apartment. Grabbing a slice of pizza from a local Domino's, he phoned his lawyer, then his father. He told his father what happened and said, Why does this keep happening to me? I swear to God I didn't push her. Oh my God, I hope she's not dead. Gable was arrested on August 15, 2014 as a suspect in Worriana's death, though he insists he had nothing to do with her fall and says he never assaulted her. In October 2016, he was found not guilty of all charges. 
Ori and his family disagreed with the ruling, but they've asked for privacy as they try to remember their daughter for the intelligent, cheerful girl she was, rather than the tragic way her life came to an end. Before we go, I'd like to give a very special shout out to Loot Crate. Loot Crate has generously decided to sponsor this episode of Seriously Strange. Loot Crate is a subscription box service that sends awesome and exclusive geek and gamer gear to your door every month. And if you head to LootCrate.com slash Rob and enter code Rob, you will get 10% off of your first Loot Crate. Each month has a different theme, and last month's theme was horror, featuring gear from Ash vs. Evil Dead, The Walking Dead, and more. This month's theme is magical and is packed full of items from Doctor Strange, Game of Thrones, Fantastic Beasts, and more. So all you need to do is head down into the description below, press the link to LootCrate.com slash Rob, enter code Rob, and join me in the awesome Loot Crate community. Thanks for listening. That's all for this episode. Be sure to press on screen to watch my other videos here. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to my channel by pressing above because you won't want to miss what's next, and I'll see you next time.